something about Canada. Uh, and you know, oftentimes in the U.S., uh, people are under the impression that uh, you know Canada is so much better. Yeah. <laughs> you know, maybe, maybe those are the, the, the rumors that to have persisted since the era of slavery. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, when, um, black people were able to take the Underground Railroad uh, to Canada. When I was underground, when I was you know, running from the FBI back in the um, 1970, uh, I thought seriously about Canada. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, uh, <laughs> I've been looking for a long time at the situation of, uh, of, of, of uh, imprisoned populations in, in this country. Mm -hmm. And the, the racism that drives a rising, uh, soaring prison population. And if you, um, I, I was looking at a report that came out um, less than a year ago that uh, was released by Howard Sailors, the correctional investigator uh, here in Canada. And what he said um, was that um, the prison population had grown something like six, a 16.5 percent increase. Uh, uh, during that period, the overall Aboriginal population in the prison grew by 46%. Same. Now, the number of now, but let's talk about women. Because oftentimes we think about the prison crisis as a problem that primarily affects men. And while, of course, we have to be concerned about the men who are targeted by these systems, we cannot fail to recognize the way in which women are often centrally involved. First of all, the, the fastest growing sector of the imprisoned population is women. Yeah. And that is true in Canada, that is true in the US, mm -hmm. it is true in Australia, it is true in Europe, it is true literally all over the world. Mm -hmm. And the, the, the number during this period, uh, uh, the 10 years that were covered by the report, the number of Aboriginal women increased by 80%. Shame. And so now Aboriginal women, Native women, Indigenous women account for one in three of all women under federal sentence. Mm -hmm. Now, you know, we can also talk about uh, uh, the rise of, in general, of, uh, of people of color in incarcerated uh, uh, populations. Uh, um, and, but let, let, let me, let me wait, let, let me um, dwell for a moment on the question of incarcerated women. Because, I mean, I've been doing this work for many, many years. Uh, when I went to jail in 1970, I had been working to free Bobby Seale. <laughs> free <laughs> the <afternoon. laughs> And, you know, we had, we had a whole number of political prisoners. Uh, and we talked about um, the prison crisis as if it were largely a crisis of the use of the institution as a political tool of repression, which it was. But then thanks to the brilliance of, um, of prison intellectuals like George Jackson, we began to think about the larger use of the institution and the way it functioned as a tool of racism writ large. Now, not only against those of us who were political prisoners, but, but, but the fact that 
the, a disproportionate number of people behind bars at that time. I mean, at that time, there were maybe 200,000 people in prison, which we thought was a huge number. Of course, now there are 2.5 million people in the U.S. if you look at uh, all of the various uh, institutions of incarceration. But we tended to talk primarily about men. And so I want to talk a little bit about women this evening. I want to talk about populations of people in prison who are often considered to be um, relatively minor. We can also talk about trans populations. Thank you. disabuse ourselves of the assumption that quantity uh, constitutes that which should determine how we examine a particular institution. If there are more men in prison, then we only talk about men, we forget about women, we forget about trans prisoners. I want to I suggest that actually if we look at the small populations, we may learn something even more important about the way the institutions function. And so therefore we may gain greater insight not only about the use of the institution as a tool of repression against women, against the uh, 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 LGBTQ communities, uh, and specifically against trans communities, but we may learn something even more insightful about how it functions as a whole. Now, um, 